Body Luis Sudeli Merdinian and Tanik. Good morning. It is good to see you again. It's me, Pastor Arud. And uh, I've been really enjoying recording these chapel sessions and being with you. I hope you're enjoying them too. And there is more to come until we'll get to see you in person. But let me tell you, there is this two Armenian songs that have been uh, the joy of my everyday singing, right? And I want to... Uh, sing them for you and I'm going to invite you to try to sing with me we'll do it a couple of times as weeks go by and I'm sure you're going to learn them you're going to love them and enjoy singing as well the first one it says davaneng davaneng Jesus netere davaneng davaneng Jesusin Tunzatek, Tunzatek, Ov Surpere, Tunzatek Duk, Havi Dena Bes. Well, let's give a try.
Amen. Yev Amen. Well, I know there is a lot going in that song, but as I said, I just want you to start getting familiar with the melody so you can learn, you can um, know how to sing, and then we will sing it together. But as of right now, we're going to sing one more song before we go to our study. It's going to remind us that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. So Christ alone is my, yours, our cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. One more time. surrender my heart to you God I pray that every single day I'll be able to renew my mind and, and learn to walk like you to talk like you to love like you I just want to be like you because you're perfect When I fail, God, you lift me up. When I break my covenant, you forgive me and, and you offer me a new beginning. 
you are the cornerstone of my life, my heart. And I pray, Lord God, that I will be able, we all will be able to build on you, to be safe, to be firm in our faith, knowing that fixing our eyes upon Jesus, the author of our salvation, the perfect worker of our faith is always on our side. Praise be to your holy name today and forever. Say with me, amen. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed those songs. I did. And we are going to go ahead and go to our third session. Let me turn this down. There you go. You can hear me better. We're going to go to our third session um, studying this verse, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Uh, let me read it for you as a reminder. It says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. If you remember two weeks ago, we spoke about fixing our eyes on Jesus to know who Jesus is and to make sure that we are um, alert. We are ready to follow him without any distractions in our lives. Week two. Yeah, we spoke about God being the author of our salvation. He created us. He loved us. He even made himself responsible for us. That is why, as we said, we read in John 3, 16, God loved, God gave, God has done it all. All we have to do is believe, surrender, and enjoy that relationship with the author of our lives. Well, we got to close that verse. And the verse closes saying that he is the perfecter of our faith. You know what this verse tells me? That faith takes practice. Just like anything else, we need to practice to grow. We need perseverance. We need discipline. We need this every day, all the day, all the time. As we climb a mountain, as we go up the stairs, that's how faith works. Well, it must begin somewhere. And, you know, I've always found myself before I want to learn something. First, I have to unlearn something before I need to learn to let go, make room so I can work on the new one. I'm not sure what you want to think of today, but I, I, I'm pretty sure there are things that you need to unlearn before you learn the new things. Talk about bad habits. Maybe there are things that have become part of your every day that you know they're wrong. And as we're trying to learn the new one to exercise and grow in our faith, First, we have to ask God to help us so we can let go of negative things, bad habits. Maybe disobedience to the things we need to do. Maybe failing our promises. Uh, maybe mismanaging our time, our talents, abilities, all the blessings we have. What I'm saying is in this practice of faith, it may start practicing to let things go that are not helping, that are not supposed to be part of our everyday. You know what perfection means? Perfect means complete. Perfect means to get it done. When something becomes whole, you can say, this is the best I could have, I could have done. So when we're saying he's the perfecter of our faith, we're saying that it will get to a point when we meet God face to face and he can say, your faith is is now completed you know the bridge between incomplete to complete i call it progress that's what connects from letting go to learn progress not a one minute thing not a one try thing but a progress a bridge that is called progress you know god he's a perfectionist why because he's perfect now that is fair because when it comes to our perfection, he said, I will do it for you. I will help you. I will guide you. I will give you the strength. I will open the doors. I will show you the ways. I will take care of you. All you have to do is be in that progress. Do not give up. Give in. Surrender. Wait on the Lord. Be encouraged and follow his paths. Our perfection will be the work of his hands, will be the work 
of the Holy Spirit. You know, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 says, we can be confident in this very thing that he, he, God, who started, who has begun this good work in us, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? He who has started this work of perfection of our faith, he will take it to completion. He will guide us until we see him face to face. So what I'm saying is he leads, we follow. He shows we trust, but progress means to trust him when we cannot see. To trust him when we cannot understand. I call him trust him in the gaps. Trust him in the silence. Trust him in the dark days. Trust him in the storms. Trust him amongst your questions. Trust him when you do not understand. You know, one of my favorite uh, Christian speakers has become a young man. His name is Tim, Tim Tebow, and I'm sure you've heard of him. And here's one of my favorite quotes that he says, I don't know what my future holds, but I do know who holds my future. Let me repeat that again. I don't know what my uh, future holds, but I do know who holds my future. I don't understand, but I know. You know who had to face that? Peter. You know Peter from the Bible, Simon Peter? Let me tell you, it was the Last Supper when Jesus gets off the table. He breaks, breaks the party and says, I got to do something that it's not your usual thing to do. He starts washing everyone's feet, his disciples, right? And he comes to Simon Peter in, in John 13, verse 6 and 7. There's a, there's a conversation. Let me read part of it. Verse 6 says, Then he came to Simon Peter to wash his feet. And Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, Peter, what I am doing you do not understand now. But you will know after this. I love this verse. Because I feel like sometimes when God says, I'm going to do something in your life. You're saying, well, wait, that is unusual. That's not how I do things. That's not what I'm used to. This is different. Jesus tells you the same thing. What I am doing in your life, you don't understand. But it's part of the process. Remember, process progress from incomplete to complete so when you are in the incomplete you do not understand but he says one day when this work is completed then you will realize you will understand why i'm doing what i'm doing in your life today trust him obey him love him enjoy this relationship with god my dear friend Fix your eyes on Jesus, please. And when you fix your eyes on Jesus, remember that he's the author of your salvation. He knows the end. He's not this lost leader trying to give you some hope every day. He has you in the palm of his hands. He has you in his heart, in his mind. And at last, know that he will complete the work that he has started in you. He will perfect your faith. Do not overwork. Be burdened, but enjoy. Enjoy this progress. Enjoy the process. So this is why I can smile. And this is why I can spread the joy of fixing my eyes on Jesus, enjoying and loving the author of my salvation, and knowing that my faith will be complete you know god loves you so much and in all these sessions i'm just trying to not convince you but remind you that trusting god is the best thing you can do please be obedient and enjoy this genuine relationship with jesus close your eyes pray with me father we thank you Thank you for giving us salvation. Thank you for giving us Jesus. And thank you for completing your work. Now I pray that we will be faithful in this progress, in this process, until we'll get to see 
a complete salvation when we see you face to face. But thank you for today. Thank you for tomorrow. Every minute, every moment counts when you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a blessed day.